project management. We teach construction project management. We're not managing a process for GE or Siemens or all those guys. They go a lot of details to have a prototype and a new computer or new device. We are construction, which is slightly easier, I think. So um, chapter seven, Adam, where chapter seven, he believe in that, um, says setting goals and securing commitment. When you have a project, you have to set a goal for your project. We kept, I kept telling you guys the goal of our project, any, any industrial, pro, any construction project that we have, the goal is to complete your project on time within budget with a happy internal and external customer. It's very easy. That's a general goal, right? So is everybody happy when we finish the project? Is the, are the customers happy when they hire us um, next time? And did we make money on this project? That's a successful project. So that's our goal. So setting goals and securing commitment. <clears throat> and then the, that's the first one I'm going to go over, guys. A uh, few things. And then, Adam, I would like to go over scheduling. Um, you cannot, and I tell this one, guys, uh, and I'm not saying this in any way, shape, or form, believe me. Uh, you cannot control a process un unless you systemize it. And to systemize the process, Adam, you have to schedule it. You have to use schedules. Um, you don't know if you're doing good, bad, or ugly unless you have a plan. In, the, in order to have a plan, you have to have a schedule. That's how the plan goes, with schedules. The main two ingredients of any schedule, guys, is time and resources. You have to have time and resources. That's the two main ingredients. So we'll talk about the scheduling in a second, guys, especially the gang charts that we use. And I uh, grabbed yours, Derek, uh, from the industrial project. And here's a process. We have an industrial project that you guys are doing for your friend, Chad. And we put a schedule for it. Um, when you work in any project, your project manager, um, in this case, Adam, uh, it's going to be Mike or anyone at Michelle Cooley, will have a schedule for the project. They know where the project is heading. You know, they know the time allocated for each task of the project when they assign it to you, and it's their job to keep track of it. So I'll um, I'll show you guys this industrial project, which all of you guys have done. Uh, remember, in the industrial project part of the of this. So let's um, <clears throat> let's talk about guys a little bit about uh, the project and setting goals. When we have a project, Karen, um, building the stadium. That's the project that we have, right? Easy. Building the stadium, we have a project to build the stadium. So define your project and define the goal for the project. A goal for our commercial or industrial or hospital or sport arena goal, a project uh, is construction or design as happy internal, external customers and a project done on time within budget and we made profit. That's your goal. That's the ultimate goal, right? The ultimate goal that you have is to achieve <clears throat> um to achieve you know um, a successful project what we call a successful project um so you set your goal and that's the goal they're going to communicate adam with all the people that work for you when they start working for you and the second thing you need to do is get the people to buy in that buy into this goal i mean i hope you are or you're if you don't buying buy into a successful project, then maybe you shouldn't be on that team. So buying into the goal that you set, for us guys in the construction industry, it's really not hard. You're working on a project, we have a deadline, we have one month to submit the blueprints, the drawings and the specification. Um, your project manager will communicate this to you, give you the time uh, frame for this project, allocate the tasks for you to do, and you are expected to finish this task with a budget. Um, uh, things happen, but if all the time things happen, we have a problem. I understand, guys, we have a plan, and sometimes I uh, I had uh, an individual in my class, Derek, a couple of times, and um, the individual kept saying, "Is life is what happened to you while you were doing other things. Um, I understand your life is what happens to you while you are planning or doing other things. That's fine. Uh, but when you plan your life, 90% if you plan your life or if you plan your project, 90% of what happened to you or the project is going to be, I would say 90% is predictable. There's 10% you got hit when you're coming by a car. How often that happened? Um, but 90% of our life is predictable for the most part. 90, I would say 80, maybe 80, 90%. If you plan it, it's predictable. If you do certain things and you task, it's predictable. So 
<clears throat> so all about planning. When you plan and you have a team, we talked about the team guys and the conflict and what's not. The first thing you need to do is get those guys to buy into the project after you have your um, your goal, you set your goal, then you communicate to a meetings, uh, Adam, with people who answer to you and get them commitment. Uh, create a vision that motivates your workers when you're, uh, um, you know, it's, it's the vision that motivates your workers, guys. A lot of engineering companies, uh, we want to be the top notch electrical contractor in the state of Minnesota. That's a vision. You guys have seen a lot of project managers walking in there. Each and every one of them wants to be the best electrical contractor in their niche, in their area, um, in the state of Minnesota. And that's uh, supposed to motivate you. You know, if that doesn't motivate you, I don't know, maybe you're in the wrong industry. <laughs> you know what I mean, wouldn't you want to work for the top notch electrical engineering firm or electrical contract in the state of Minnesota? <clears throat> Second, <clears throat> after you. You have a vision that motivates the people, and, and all of us guys love to be part of a success. Wouldn't you, uh, Derek, like to be part of building the stadium? And uh, and when you walk around and you took your kids there and said, I was part of the team that built the stadium. Isn't that nice? And I got paid for it. It's not like uh, sharing and caring hands. So we all like success. We all like to be part of a success. So um, you have a vision, top-notch engineering or electrical contractor firm, Motivate the people through your vision and the word that people could continue. Motivation, guys, is not one time deal, Adam. I'll meet with you and motivate you. It's an ongoing issue. Keep reminding the people of the goal, keep reminding the people of the mission that you are in. Motivate your workers towards the goal. And I can't emphasize, and I'm, you know, this book can track any project management for anything, but our goal, guys, in the construction is to move you from this point to this point with the minimum amount of fluctuation, minimum amount of time and resource fluctuation. That's our plan. Does that make sense? Moving you from point A to point B with a minimum amount of fluctuation, with minimum amount of fluctuation until we reach our destination. The minimum amount of fluctuation is diversion from the, from the plan. You have a plan, we diverge, make it minimum. And I can't emphasize, I keep drawing this one all the time. Here's a fluctuation, guys, around the plan, you know, and the, set, the first one is another fluctuation. So you want a minimum amount of fluctuation. Keep the people in focus, keep them uh, motivated. We'll talk about what, this one also when, we, when it comes to scheduling. So we set our goals. We motivate people by being the best top-notch electrical engineering firm, or electrical contractor. And they, they talk about, guys, buying in. It's not enough to say, I, I say, people, you need people who work on you to be motivated, excited to do this work. Um, <laughs> you know, you don't want people to, you know, you want people who want to build a career, Adam, not a job, not a paycheck. Um, if you're a project manager, the top notch, your top notch employees, the people who really love what they're doing, they're building a career. They like to build hospitals and sport arenas. They take pride of this work. The people who are doing it um, and thinking of it like flipping hamburgers at McDonald's, except with a double amount of paycheck, you don't want this group of people working for you, if you can. Um, you want the people who think uh, they love their, their, take pride and love what they're doing. So buying into the project. <clears throat> um, and another thing as we move on, Adam, when we have the goal, you need to set doable expectations. What's a doable expectation? <laughs> when you build a project, I can't tell you guys to take a commercial project and estimate this project in a day. That's not a doable expectation. A good manager understand the project and understand how to divide the project into a task, doable task. A doable task, guys, have two legs. Task, to do the task, Adam, you have to have, a task works in two legs, time and resources. Give me time and give me resources. I can be a, a brain surgeon, uh, Derek, believe it or not. If you give me, if you give me enough, enough, the enough for me could be a lot, enough amount of time and enough amount of resources. Any one of us guys can be anything you want to be given enough amount of time and enough amount of resources and commitment from the individual. The challenge in the industry, any one of you guys, you can finish everything perfectly. If you, if I give you an unlimited amount of time, an unlimited amount of resource, you can do anything. 
Unfortunately, the world is limited in resources and in time. So you're given a certain amount of time to do a certain amount of tasks. Based on the project manager who gave it to you guys, they have decided it is a doable task. Now they could be wrong too, <laughs> but it is a doable task. So when when uh, Mishad Kuli, they give you a task to finish power layoff, uh, lay, layout, guys, the, the your project manager have, uh, based on experience, have uh, decided that to lay out um, and circuit all these uh, blueprints, Adam, for this project, it will take an average um, uh, designer, it will take him a week, and they give you a week. Um, now, um, above average people might finish it in four days or three days, um, but they want you to shoot at least be an average and do it in a week. Does that make sense? These are the doable resources. So we make sure that your um, your goals are um, set doable resource, doable expectation, things, tasks that can be done within the time frame, resources and uh, and money. Um, setting budget, um, I can't emphasize, guys. We move into uh, in the world. We move into two directions. We need time. We have time, and we have money or resources. I like the resources, not just money. We have time and money, and that's the frame that you work on, Adam. Um, you have limited amount of time and limited amount of resources, including money that you do on the project, and you're playing within that framework. Within that framework, um, the time and the money. How much can you finish it within budget, on time, within budget? So the first thing you need to do when you have a project, you have to set a time frame for the project. That's what you guys come to us done within all the classes that we're set. We have a time frame. We give you a time frame. You, you are to finish a time frame. Um, you know, relax. We can give you sometimes. We had students over the past. We gave them an extra week to do it. But um, the minute that you start going on over time, guys, you're below average. Done. An average person within a time frame, given time frame, you are to finish your job. Granted, the time frame is, is doable for an average person. Now, the time frame could be also harsh, you know, um, there is, there is Matt. I was waiting for you for almost three hours, man. <laughs> Talking about time frame. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have our timeline, and um, I don't have time to six three zero. Where's six three zero? Six three zero. Um, okay, so we have the time and the resources, guys. Within the time and the resources, you your goals have to be. Divided into tasks doable within a time frame of time and resources. Um, so timeline and cost factor, very, very, imp very, very important, guys. So that's we talked about this one. Um, then we talk about managing goal conflicts. Now um, we have. I didn't make coffee, sorry, man. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, so we have. Um, we have the time, like I said, time and resources, and you're managing this project within that frame of time and resources, limited, finite time and resources, and you're playing, um, going from point A to point B with a minimum fluctuation in the time and resources. A good manager, Adam, will allow fluctuation because the world is not perfect. We live in an unperfect world, so that's where the fluctuation is here, that rubble thing. But also with organization and scheduling, you can make an unperfect world very close to perfect, not close. I mean, you can organize an unorganized world if you have a plan for it. But you have to allow for fluctuation, minimum amount of fluctuation. Okay, we set that goal, set the time, guys. Managing goal conflict. Um, so yeah, when you have goals and when people Adam start working for goals, they have you're going to have conflicts. Uh, between people who are working on the project. Here's a few things that you can keep in mind um, to solve some of the conflicts that arise from um, working on it on that particular project. Um, so, surefire ways, I like that word, sure, surefire ways um, to solve goal conflicts. You have a team, remember we talked about forming a team with different skills, set of skills to complement each other, guys. Your goal is to define what the team is, define what, who is doing what, identify uh, the skills of each member of the team to every other member, so everybody knows what everybody can contribute to this team, right? <clears throat> now we are working on a project, we set the goals, we have global expectations, and we have some conflict. 
So what are you going to do as a project manager, Adam, when you have a conflict? Have each side states their position. Here's a couple of ways to solve conflict resolution. And again, you guys can have a PhD in conflict resolution. First thing, have each uh, have each side state the uh, other's position. When you're a project manager, Matt, um, if you have been a parent, guys, you probably understand. Some of you, uh, and maybe Derek is a parent, only one child, so there's not a lot of conflict. Um, when you're a project manager, <laughs> um, or uh, it's like having children. Your employees, I hate to say it, it's like having children. People are emotional about their ideas, and your job is to sit to each one of those employees of yours, or AKA children sometimes, in terms of certain behaviors, um, and listen to them. Listen to each one of them. Each side state their position when you have a conflict, right? Uh, then brainstorm creative and unconventional solution. Um, I don't know. Um, you can you can come up with uh, you know the most important thing, guys, is if you have a conflict in the team, is to take an individual, listen to each one of them, right? Set all the what's your grievance? Uh, well, she's not doing her work. He's not doing. He's not allowing me to do my work. So listen to everybody individually, and then um, you have to at one time you have to sit together. And state because you can tell me things, Derek, in front of me that you might not be willing to say it in front of the people that you know what I mean. So you hear the story individually, then you put the people together and you hear the story together, right? From each one of them. Um, use a humor. I use this uh, 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 um, to ease the tension. When you bring Adam and Matt and they have a conflict, guys, to your, to your office as a project manager, there is tension in the air. And I don't know how many of you guys have, you'll see that one in a project. There is tension. People, we're human beings. We're emotional. Um, we get affected. So there is tension. A lot of people, a good suggestion is to use the humor. Um, sometimes it sounds like uh, silly when everybody's tense and you as a project manager. Uh, ease the situation. Take this into consideration that it's a tense situation you need to uh, talk about. Bring a topic slightly, light, light topic that brings some humor. Um, I use this one over a meal, negotiate over a meal, guys. If you have a very, uh, if you have two very good employees of yours, I emphasize the word good employees that you want to keep and they don't see eye to eye. Now, if one of them is not good, it, you're wasting your time. Literally, you're wasting your time. I mean, <laughs> uh, if, now you have two good employees in what they do. What, one estimator, one designer. Very good, Derek. At Parsons, work really good in their field, field of study. But they don't get along and they're both on your team you as a project manager your job is to make sure that they get along so um, a good example is you be shared or take him out for a meal go out use the meal go let the company the company will pay for a meal go sit there chat talk about life talk about children talk about relations talk about music talk about other things that will get the people to know each other guys and the more we know each other Matt Believe it or not, the more we tend to get along, uh, you know what I mean? And there's certain people you might say, I really hate to even know them. I don't want to know them, right? You guys have been in a situation where I didn't care about what if you die tomorrow. Um, not like that that hard. <laughs> but, but for you as a project manager, you read the bottom line. I mean, if you get along or you don't get along, that's your, your problem. But if you're not getting along, will affect your project and the success the success of your project it becomes your problem right don't you guys think so it becomes your problem because people getting along guys in a team will produce will will produce better will get better outcomes for you more quality work and you as a project manager your job is to make sure that people get along when they are on your team right now what they do in their private life that's their life so negotiate over a meal take them out <clears throat> Uh, sit there, chat for two hours, you know, um, and this might be a waste of time. Some people think of it as a waste of time, guys. Investing, I um, I always tell the people, Matt, you can, the time frame that we allocate for work, like eight hours, um, if you ask people honestly, they can tell you sometimes in eight hours, they did a worth of one hour of work. And sometimes in a week, um, in an eight hours, they can do only one hour worth of work. Right? Or sometimes in eight hours, you can do nine hours worth of work or 10 hours worth of work. You see what I mean? So the time frame 
and productivity is not always one to one. Does that make sense? Does it mean that you sit in your office for one hour, you produce exactly equivalent to one hour? You know, we're a human being. We slow down and go up and down. Anyway, so this time that you negotiate over a meal, sit down. <clears throat> there will be time well spent to um, <clears throat> make sure that people get along. Um, now, if all hell break loose. A lot of people use guys professional arbitrator. I don't know if that's good. Typically, in some organization, they bring it up. So if you, if it's getting really uh, tough, those guys get, don't get along at them, and they're really making uh, issues. You might have to bring another project manager or the HR and sit there and basically see what what the situ what you can come up with. Um, um, Outgoing build coming ground. This is another another topic, guys. Build the coming ground. When you do a conflict resolution, start with the things that we agree on. So Matt and uh, and Adam are working on the same project. You guys both agree on the goal of the project. I hope so. Otherwise, I don't want you in my project, right? As a, what is what is the goal of a project? Successful project. Can you look your your boss in the eye, and you and your team member? In the same way, and tell him that you don't believe in that goal. Look at it. <laughs> no, boss, I really don't believe in the goal of this project, which is successful project, right? So that's what we all agree on, right? We agree that we want to deliver the most successful project for this organization, construction or design. That's a common ground for all of us. You go sit on that common ground and start building on it. And um, so find the things that's coming between all of us. Um, there a lot of people, guys, when you have, again, I can't emphasize, this is a conflict error between two people that you care about. There's one person, one designer, one engineer, both of them are really nice people. Um, and you want these two are engaged in a conflict, working for a project. Both of them are very competent in their field of study. Both of them are very vital to your, uh, to your project and the success of your project. And you are to bring them together for the... Uh, uh, for the common cause of having a very successful project for you. Okay, physically remove the discussion away from the workplace. Um, like I said, that's part of uh, negotiating over over a meal, guys. Move them, go out. A lot of companies, big companies, they take their all employees, guys, building team, building spirit, building relationship. They take them out of the whole the whole area to a resort and what's not, and they spend the, a day or two or weeks on big companies. Build relationship between the people. Because when you and I are sitting at night, you're sipping your favorite drink, and I'm sipping my favorite drink and chatting at night away from work. You know, um, and then you start telling me a little bit about your, your life. Don't you think that the more you know about the people, the more you tend to like him, kind of? Derek, don't you think so? If I don't know, if the only way I know about you is just that you're sitting in my class and doing your work that I asked you to do, um, uh, that's fine. But if there's a conflict, it's really nice to know a few things about each other. So building relationship, guys, is a very, very important. Move away from work. Have people uh, dress casually, um, not dress up professionally with ties. When you put your professional at chair, guys, and you sit in front of somebody else, you gear yourself and you're mentally geared into um, different different way of thinking. When you put your jeans on and your tennis shoes and you go golfing or you go walking or you're in the wilderness, you mentally prepare yourself for a different different way of thinking. Don't you think so? You're more relaxed. Um, so dress up casually. Anyway, so these are methods that you can use, um, uh, uh, my friend Matt, when you have a conflict on your project to solve the conflict between individuals, conflict between individuals. And you guys can, I hate to say it, but you have seen people walking in here and they say either you're fit or you don't. What does that mean you fit or you don't in our culture? Not a whole lot of room, <laughs> you know what I mean? So the assumption that you have a conflict between two individuals here, guys, is the assumption that they both of these two individuals fit in the culture of the organization. If one individual does not fit on the culture of the organization, um, you know, there's a, uh, there's, I always say, I have a, a contractor coming here, Derek, he always say, uh, there's a room for you, but not, uh, not in our firm. <laughs> you know, we all have, you know, room in this world, but it might be at a different firm or a place for you. Any comments, guys, about methods for diffusing goal conflict or solving goal conflicts? 
So if you have a goal, you have conflict, you are to interfere as a project manager to solve this, this, this conflict, guys, because ultimately it will affect the progress of your project. And ultimately, the, our goal is a successful project. Successful project. Any comments? Any questions? Karen, questions, comments? You guys, you don't want to be project managers after that? You Now, do you, you wonder why why project managers, when you go, how did your interview go? Good? So you wonder how uh, your project managers see you when they sit? A lot of a lot of this stuff that you do, guys, uh, Derek and Matt and Adam, uh, project managers, for the most part, most organizations go to the same training that you hear. Similar, very similar goals, setting goals and all the stuff. Especially in the construction industry, guys, <laughs> if you're working in different type of industry, they might have different goals. Um, but in the construction and engineering industry, we're kind of a little bit rigid. We follow standards and rules because if we don't, people's life depend on what we do and we can blow up things. Don't you think so? And we can lose our jobs and we can kill people if we don't. We're doing electrical work. We're building buildings. Uh, we're not drawing with all the respect to drawing that you can put in a wall that makes us happy, which is very, very important. Believe me, uh, you're building a hospital, um, <laughs> you know, you're building a stadium. Do you want your stadium to blow up the switch gear? So it's a major, major thing that so you have to keep in mind. Okay, we talked about guys managing goal conflicts and the methods for doing that. Um, <clears throat> And we talked about guys, um, when you have the goal, you explain the goal to your people, you have uh, you have buy in the goal. And it's really not hard in our industry, the construction to get the buy into the uh, into the goal, the buy into the goal is successful project, every one of us walk in every day that you want your project to be successful. Um, and I can't emphasize as a good project manager guys, um, what motivate people, uh, Derek is a very simple thing. Uh, what motivates most of the people what's in it for me really is most of us what's in it for me what's in it for me is not just money and benefit and what's not what's in it for me is pride when you build a hospital and you walk in with your children and you say i was part of the team who built this hospital that's what's in it for me pride i am proud to have been part of a team that built this hospital there you point it to your children is that what you think is cool i think it's cool that's number one. And number two, of course, what you need to, you're making a living too. So you need to be, what's in it for me is compensation, recognition for your work in your firm. So a good manager recognize that what's in it for me drives a lot of us. Um, you know, so when you have a team and your uh, uh, team members, always make sure that thinking what's in it for that guy that motivate him, um, give him recognition for his work um, publicly, especially publicly. Um, internally or externally, when you take, uh, when you guys go out and meet with the customer, say, well, Derek was an awesome estimator on this project. That will go a long way in front of the customers uh, with the project manager walk, or Adam was a great designer. He designed all the power for this hospital. And of course, compensation and sharing profits. That motivates a lot of us guys. Um, we work for a living, obviously, and we like to be recognized for our work. Um, especially as a project manager share the success with the people not just the failure share the success with the people so that's that's a major major thing they can do so any comments gentlemen any questions guys any comments so we talked about setting goals for your project you have a project you set the goal for your project successful within budget um uh, on time with a happy internal and external customers that's your goal for any project that's my statement define it um get the people to buy into this and and the goal can be divided later on guys into tasks we're going to talk about next chapter talk about how to divide your goal into tasks it's not enough to say i need a successful project from you guys <laughs> right that's really well give me the plan that's a goal big fat goal then later on we're going to divide 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 this goal guys into tasks Active and every activity has to tie to these tasks with measurable amount of resources and time. Now we have a plan. Now we have a plan. Um, if you don't like plans, um, and if you uh, regret having a plan for you, you are not a good material for a good project manager. You know, a good project manager guys use plans, 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 plans. Um, they stick to the plans with a minimum amount of fluctuation. 
I like the word fluctuation of the plan. When they say fluctuation, meaning above or below the plan in time and material. You can go up and down in the time. You're, you're late today, Derek, for submitting your power, but tomorrow you will compensate it for lighting. You know what I mean? You fluctuate a little bit, but you're heading towards a goal, though, which is at the end of the day, you submit everything on time in your project. And if you can't, and there's some, and I can't emphasize, guys, 90% of the things goes okay. There's always 10% of that could screw up your project and made the fluctuation too big. Your job as a project manager to keep an eye on these 10 or 20% that cause most of the problems for you and minimize them and interfere immediately. When Derek starts yelling at his partner and interfering, causing the problem and the fluctuation start in so here's my fluctuation right here. And now Derek is pushing the fluctuation up. Can you see that all the way up here, right? And on the other hand, so your job is to interfere right at this point and say, solve the problem. Don't chop up people's heads, but solve the problem. Why are you interfering and fluctuating too much from the plan? Taking too long time to do it. Uh, taking too much resources, right? Time is also part of resources. Any comments, guys, about the goals, setting the goals for your project and um, gaining commitment for your goals? Having goals have to be tied to time and resources, like you're going to see in a second here. And if you have a conflict, your job is to immediately interfere and solve the problem between the between the people who, are, who work for you. Um, any comments, any questions? Comments, questions? So the next <clears throat> the next uh, chapter I want to talk about, Adam, is gang charts and um, diagram, uh, flow diagrams and all this good stuff. Um, if you're a project manager, you have to believe in scheduling. Gotcha. I mean, you have no choice. If you don't believe in scheduling, you don't believe in setting goals with uh, resources, uh, time and money, or time and resources, not just money, time and resources, and meeting these goals. And if you don't meet these goals, you sit and you explain why we don't meet, we did not meet these goals. If you don't believe in this, um, you're not a good quality project manager. You really, you're not going to keep track of your project. Um, it really is it's as simple as that. And if also, if you're an employee that you do not believe in meeting goals, um, um, and you know finishing things on time within budget and what's not you are in it for a rough ride you really is and i told you guys before um when the market and i've seen it over 12 years here at dunwoody when the market is good Derek, everybody's happy when the market slows down there's a list that everybody keeps every company keeps you do not want to be on that list say well he keeps just you know goofing around or he doesn't get it or whatever they have a list so he's okay now. We are busy now. When it's slow down, he'll be the first to go. Done. That's very simple. You'll see it. Um, all of us are affected. I'm not. I'm you and I and everybody else. Guys. The list in the in the mind of the upper management on how the company is going to do. Your job is to make sure that um, to the best of your ability, <laughs> you're not at the top of the list. <laughs> you might be on the list. All of us at one point on the list because we go bankrupt. The company can go bankrupt. So we're at one point, all of us on the list. You know, we have to go. But they hate to be the first. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't you? Don't you hate to be the first? <laughs> Especially if you like what you're doing. So the first would be the guy who does not, you know, doesn't show up on time, doesn't uh, finish his, his, his project on time, complain all the time, bad attitude, um, you know, all these stuff guys will get black dots next to your name. So it, it makes you go up in the top of that list. Okay, any comments, gentlemen, any questions? Any comments, any questions? So that's basically what I would like to do about this particular project. I can't emphasize, I know you guys are still designers and graduating. In the past, uh, Derek, uh, our, the, the concern about our program here is we are called electrical construction design and what? Management. Have you guys paid attention to the management? We do a great job over the years in the electrical design. Great job. You guys have done a lot of projects with me. Uh, but the management over the time, that's why we introduced the last two years of been using this. We 
I use the management as a scheduling as part of management. That's why we start introducing in the last couple of weeks is management and estimating go side on side on our industry. So we introduce that. You guys have done a great job on estimating. I believe so. You know two softwares right now. Um, I was very pleased with what I saw yesterday with you, Matt. I mean, it really is. You know, you're getting it. Uh, you, now, are you an estimator? I hope not. You know, would they take your bid right now and run with it? I hope not. But you are you have potential to do a lot of a lot of good stuff. All of you. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys uh, five minutes and then I'm gonna flip into scheduling. Scheduling is something you guys are familiar with. Um, this is how you control the process by having schedule. So let me give you five minutes here. <clears throat> Okay, um, this chapter, Derek, is probably dear to your heart and dear to mine and dear to all of us. You guys have done this with your friend Chad. It's called scheduling. Uh, for the commercial project, Karen, we did a schedule, a design construction schedule for the commercial project. For the industrial project, you guys did a, um, um, a construction design, design built uh, schedule. Um, so scheduling, we talked about guys a project and we define what the project is, a successful completion of a construction or engineer project with heavy customers, internal, external, within budget, on time. That's our project and that's our goal for this project. Now, in order to teach, and then you form the teams, remember how we form teams and we talked about challenges in the teams and we talked about conflicts, people throwing rocks at each other and eggs and what's not in that team and how are you as a project manager got sent to the humanity are going to solve the whole problem right um we talked about all this one guys but the single most systematic way of solving the problem adam is to have a schedule a schedule is a plan a plan guys when you have a plan the the most the nicest thing about having a plan is if you have a plan then you know that you are on track or off track if you don't have a plan, do you guys know if you are on track or off track? Um, now, I, coming, this is coming from an engineer, guys. I'm very aware that plans can hinder your ability to think outside the box, too. It does. So you got to be very careful, especially us as an engineer, because most of the things have been invented in the world because of a mistake in a plan. <laughs> You know, people invented a lot of things in the world because of a mistake. They were just experimenting things. Um, unfortunately, you don't go to Parsons and Hunt and Egan and uh, and and Shad Kool Erickson and Halberg and say, "I'm going to go sit experiment today with your project today." You might. With him, that's a fluctuation. I'm going to sit for a whole week and experiment with our with Revit, and you guys are going to pay me for that. They might. Michelle actually has designated group of people to just do. Uh, Revit build families. That was experiment. That was great. Your, but it was a plan. Your plan is to come up with families for us. That was not, you know, here's your plan. That was a plan for them. Okay, so the single most important thing, Karen, is when it comes to a project, the thing that could, the, the, the only way systematic scientific that can guarantee a project will succeed is something called work breakdown which is Mr. Schedule, Work Breakdown Schedule, WBS. Um, you take the work and you break it down into step-by-step -step schedule. Does that make sense? That's what you guys did with me on the schedules. So what you do is, um, it, um, jobs are easier. It makes it easier when they're broken down in smaller tasks. And instead of telling you, you guys have done a few projects with me, the industrial project. You guys remember how we split it into different chunks? Every week we have an assignment, we're doing power uh, this week. So we know a, a general idea. We could have broken it down into even deeper. You can break it into a little, little tasks. But at least you have, break it down into manageable tasks. So develop a project. So you have a project goal. The goal is to complete the project. Um, uh, to have our goal, when you guys walked with me in some of these projects, the industrial project, for example, right there, our goal was to have a complete designed power lighting and low voltage system for a 25,000 square foot industrial building with manufacturing floor. And we have a data center and we have a hazardous location in all the support area. That was our goal, right? A big goal. And then how we divide it, I'll show you how we divide it, guys, into tasks. 
So we have our goal, uh, take uh, purpose of defining defining the goal for the objective. I didn't give you guys a whole lot of time to define the goal. I define it for you. But typically, if you have a good team, uh, let the team define the goal, guys, and define the task and break it down in their own way if it's that doable. Um, have a pre preliminary plan that's part of your schedule. Have the team refine the objectives. Um, most of the construction industry, guys, the goals are set. So I give you, here's the set of the tasks that you're going to be doing. So Derek, uh, very competent estimator, he might come back and say, Chad, you're giving me a week to do this. From my five years experience, this need um, two weeks. Now I trust, remember the trust that we started with? I trust that Derek knows what he's doing. And then I said, you know what? Maybe I screwed up as a manager. Here's another week for you. Or maybe we sit and we said, you know what? I, I, this is a tight schedule. I can't give you two weeks, but I'm going to give you a week and a half. So you see me? So allow the people to get input, especially guys, the competent global people who are working for you, which uh, the assumption is if you're working there, you should be competent. Otherwise, you probably shouldn't be there. <laughs> so that's where the people can get into defining the objectives and, and the tasks and what's not. Have team break down the objectives into tasks. Now we've got our objective, we divide them into tasks. Uh, have doors break down the task into activities. And this is how the whole um, the whole project guys is divided into. So we have, um, you started with a goal here. You have your goal. And from your goal, you're going to define, uh, um, so I have my, that one. So you have, here's my goal. You have, your goal have multiple objectives. Here's my objective. So you have mul multiple objectives from the objective each one of these objectives, and you can see that guys, have a task, task, and each one of these tasks, Adam, um, each one of these tasks have an activity. 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 Have an activity. So you have a goal divided in on an objective. So here's my goal is successful that project is designed. The activity is doing the the power in this case, right? Um, so I have my activities. I have uh, uh, my task. My uh, my objective is to finish the power. My task is doing upper level power. And divided underneath the activities is laying out my receptacles, and I'm laying out my mechanical equipment. These are another activity. Circuiting my receptacle, a third activity. Circuit my, my mechanical equipment, a fourth activity. Does that make sense, guys? So you take a goal, divide it into objective, divide the objective into tasks, and the tasks are divided into, into activities. That's the, that's the plan. That's not just a plan. That's not like a dream. I want to go to the moon. That's a plan to go to the moon. That's not a dream. I want to design at 25,000. I want to complete a design, power, low voltage, and lighting system um, to a 25,000 square foot building. Um, that's a dream. When you guys came to me before, I hope so, otherwise you shouldn't have been here. Was it a dream to take a building like the one that we did and design everything for it? That was, for you, was a dream. You came here, we put it in a plan. Now we go step by step. Now, I'm not saying that you achieved every single 100% of every single step, but you walk through all these steps, your objectives and tasks and activities. Any comments, guys, about the hierarchy of breaking the goal into objective, into tasks, into activities? And you might not remember all these terminology, guys, but remember, you have to have a plan. Your plan has to be detailed plan based on activities that assigned a time and a resources, time resources that can be measurable. So I'm going to put Adam laying out the receptacles in the first floor, and I'm going to give him one week when he works for me to finish it. If he did not finish the old receptacles in one week, we have to, as a project manager, you keep a track of it, and then you have to have a, um, to your satisfaction, of course, you might have some correction, but you have to finish that task within 90%. Then your supervisor, typically, if you have a super design supervisor, will look at it, they might have to add the 10%, but if you achieve that task as within 50%, you have failed that task. And the job of your manager is to assign to you that you failed this task. And if you work for me, if I'm an engineering firm and electrical contractor, now I'm I done with it, um, you know, you would, uh, you would be, no, I'm not going to chop off your head, but I need an explanation why everybody in the, in the firm, Derek, have a week to finish the uh, 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 takeoff for a project, and Derek took two weeks. Or he took a week, but he messed up three, four things. 
uh, major things. You know what I mean? So these are things that you have to keep track of as a project manager. Okay, so we talked about the goal, guys, divided in objectives, multiple objectives, objectives divided into multiple tasks. Um, then we have uh, we have relationship between them. Now, the way we the way they use it, Karen, uh, they use multiple ways of keeping track of your plan. I have a plan, and I can't emphasize, guys, my plan was to take oops to take you uh, in this project from this point A into oops into point B. Oh no, I don't have a whole lot of room on that one. So I'm going to take you from here to here. Here's my point B, here's my point A. My plan is to take you there with the minimum amount of fluctuation. Minimum amount of fluctuation, right? We talked about this one, guys, and I can't, I keep drilling it into your brain that this is our plan. Go from point A to point B. Point A is you have a, an idea. Um, if you're working for Michelle Kool Erickson, they want to build a hospital. That's the point A. Ideas. <laughs> Now, point B is we have finished the complete set of blueprints, a.k.a. the drawings and the specification, and we are ready to, people are ready to bid it. For you, Derek, if it's design built, we have a sport arena. We're getting that baby as, as design built. We have did the design part of it. We did the estimating part of it. And we build the construction plan, a construction schedule for it, and we're ready. And we build it in the field. It takes it, the building in the field. We have our crews working on it, building it. We're done. We walk with the customer. We got our last paycheck, and the customers are happy. The people who work on the project are delighted, and we made money. <laughs> Isn't that cool? If that if the the world is like this all the time. <laughs> It's not going to be all the time like this, but you want it to be most of the time. Otherwise, you're not going to stay in business. Okay, in order to guarantee that smooth minimum fluctuation in the plan, guys, Adam, what they use is they use the Gantt, uh, the Gantt chart. Number one, one method of, of tracking it is called the Gantt chart. You guys have done the Gantt chart. I'm going to walk you through it in a second here. The Gantt chart take um, activities, take the goal, divide it into into objectives, divide it into tasks, and assign uh, activities for it, right? So we take your goal. The goal is to complete the design, design built. I'll show you in a second what Derek did. You did it, Derek. You guys have done it. All of you have done it. Take the project, the industrial project, for example. We're going to divide it into objectives, power and lighting and what's not designed. And, and these are going to be divided into tasks and activities, and each one of them is going to be assigned a certain amount of resources, and a certain amount of time. That's it. You guys are very familiar with this one, and I'm I'm pleased that you guys have done right. Anybody disagree with that? That you guys have done it twice with me? I don't think we did it for the residential. In the past, we did, but not for this project. You have done a gang chart. I'll show you that one. The second one, Adam, that they use is flow chart. Um, this is called uh, another method that they use. It, it achieves the same method, which is having a plan to take you from point A to point B to achieve a successful care project. It's called activity on nodes. Nodes are boxes. So um, I have, I go from point A guys to point B. That's exactly what I did. So I have, this is called activity in nodes, taking me from point A to point B. And of course there could be another, another box here and this box would go to a third box and a fourth box. So you divide, you divide, um, Derek, you divide your um, goal into objective through these boxes, and you have an arrow that points. So A will lead you into B. So we meet with the customers, then we develop a sketch, right? Same thing like a Gantt chart, except the representation is different. That's called um, activity and notes. And these are all good, good ways of doing business. Um, there is activities and arrows. The third one is activities on arrows, arrows. So, um, so we have activities on arrows. My, my English is losing here. Activities on arrows. The way they do this one, Adam, is they take a dot like this and represent it with another dot. Arrows, and they come from here. Here's another dot. These are all tasks. A third one is here, and then here's one, two, three activities or tasks or objectives and what's not. That's, these are all arrows. Um, and they will point you at the end towards all these methods are coming towards 
achieving the final goal. Achieving the final goal. Any comments, guys, about these three methods of scheduling? Karen, you guys are, are used, with you are used the uh, um, Gantt chart. We use it a lot. I'm familiar with it. You guys are familiar with it. We use the activities and nodes, like a flow chart. You guys did the, um, uh, what did we do? You did uh, PLCs, right? Remember the PLC stuff? The PLC stuff, flow chart. We have a flow chart start all the way to the design. That's activity for a flow chart. Um, you use these boxes called nodes, or you can use these uh, little dots, also uh, nodes or arrows, arrows with nodes. The arrows go to that little node. Um, so three different methods of representation. Any comments, my friends? Any questions? Comments, questions about that? Ultimate goal, Karen, is to divide your project into doable tasks uh, doable, manageable, measurable, doable, manageable, measurable tasks uh, based on time and resources. Does that make sense? That's it. Because if you divide it in a non-doable tasks, you can't do it. And in order to guarantee it's done, you have to inspect it. So it have to be, you have to be doable, measurable. You can measure the success. Um, so you do it measurable and assign a certain uh, amount of time and material for it. Okay, so that's that's basically what this um, uh, schedule is talking about. Using these um, to have a schedule. Um, any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions about that? And they have different methods of doing it. Um, in the in the construction industry, probably we can't afford it, guys. But in other industries, um, in other industries. Here you go. Uh, let me see. Okay. okay. In the in the in the construction industry, we might not be able to afford it, like I said. But in other industries, you could um, you could afford to have multiple um, multiple paths. When you have a project, guys, not commonly used in the construction, like I said, you can have something called barrel path. Here's what a barrel path is. Um, if I have a job here, I started right here, guys. I have one one path for this to go from uh, to achieve it, and the same thing I come over here. You guys, uh, Derek, do you remember when you guys were designing um, um, what do you call it, a PLC? So all these are tasks, and they both lead to the same um, to the same outcome. Here's my point A, here's my point B. So I assign two teams, guys, to do the same task. Two teams. They don't do it in the construction industry. We don't have money. But the people who do it, the federal government do all that all the time. They want a fighter. If they want a fighter, what they do, guys, they go to the two major companies who build fighters and they give them, here's, you guys do this and do that. And the federal government will decide which one is the best and we make you mass produce it. So it's, it's a smart way of doing it if you have a lot of money like our feds, <laughs> you know, well, they don't, they borrow it, but that's a different story. Um, so we then you can allow them to work on this task. Obviously, if you're a construction, we can't do that. You have parallel tasks. So remember, Derek, when you become a project manager, if you want to guarantee minimum interruption in your project, try to do parallel tasks if you can, if you have the resources. Why? Because suppose I put Adam to do power and he screwed up. I'm picking on you, Adam, today. But say, I, and at the same time, I send Derek or Karen to do the job. So this track is out of whack, right? Now, this track is still, now th those guys achieve the same outcome. So uh, my project is not delayed, it's still on track. It's, it's, it's guaranteeing me a, a success. Does that make sense, guys? How you have the more parallel paths you have for your schedule, meaning the more same group of people doing the same task well we can't afford it chad uh, the more likelihood that your project will be successful if you can that's what they do it in uh, when they do construction when they do uh, manufacturing and products they they have two very competent teams working on the same problem come up with two creative solutions right you have two creative solutions unfortunately we can't afford to have two creative estimates now can you derek can they assign the project for two teams to estimate it Ooh, we don't have resources. So that path, but just be aware, if you have parallel path, it's the best. But we typically we can't. So what we have, non-parallel path. Ours will look one step, step, it will look something like this. 
going one direction, basically, towards the outcome. Or it could be start to end. And when they have these tasks, guys, they start to start and start to end or end to start. So when this task end here, this task will start. Remember when we were doing the Gantt chart? We were talking about start to end and end to start. And if uh, two separate tasks, I have two separate tasks with two atom, two global people assigned to it. Those they don't have to, and they can be done simultaneously, right? If you have as two separate tasks with a two a resource, two different resources, including two different people, they can be done at the same time. But if you have a task, one task, uh, you assign, um, that task is assigned one group of people, and then the second task have to depend on the first task to be done, then you, you, the same group of people can do the two tasks, so they finish task one, move to task two, or a different group, wait for group one, to finish task one in order for them to jump and finish a group two. So that's guys uh, end to start and start to start and all this good stuff, the way the tasks are assigned. So that's your scheduling. What scheduling guys guarantee you, and I can't emphasize um, ultimately, oops, that one, I don't know if it can allow me. There you go. So what, what task guys will guarantee you is, um, it's not working for me today, Eric, what did you do? Okay, so what the task will guarantee you, like I said, is a successful project, a plan, a plan. We're heading from here to here with a minimum amount of fluctuations, minimum amount of fluctuations. There you go. So that's your plan that you're trying to achieve, point, from point A to point B within time and resources that you have. Any comments, guys, any questions about these three methods? The Gantt chart, the activity on nodes, and the activity on uh, what they call it, the activity on errors. Any comments, any questions, my friends? Comments, questions? So what I picked for you, I picked the one that we did, guys, disregard that one. I want to minimize this. I picked Derek's, um, Derek's uh, project. And I'm just going to walk you. You guys are very familiar with that one. So here's a project that we did that you guys have done with us. Okay, so I'm going to go... First, divide it. Here's my, um, I hope I can. Here's my goal. My goal, Adam, was what? Here's my goal. My goal was a complete power lighting and low voltage design industrial project, right? Now, in order to achieve that goal, complete design belt, by the way, design and belt, then I divide it into objective. Objective number one. My objective number one was uh, schematic design. I need to do a sketch of schematic design, meet with the owner, what's not. Objective number two, guys, develop design drawings with a specification. Objective number three, do constructions. Start my construction schedule, right? You guys have done the, these are my objective, uh, construction schedule. And the last objective that could be it for me is deliver a finished project for the customers. The customers have done. Can you guys see a goal? A major goal here uh, is divided into objectives, different objectives. And under each one of these objectives, you're going to have a task with activities. A task with activities. Any comments, guys? Any questions about that one? So you have your goal, a design build, industrial project, done. Lighting, power, low voltage. Uh, design build. And then underneath, you're going to divide it into objectives. And you're going to see what we did with, look at the time frame. Very, very important, guys. We work on a finite world. You have to have a start and end of duration, Adam. You can't just do, okay, we'll finish it whenever. That doesn't doesn't cut it. So you have you have to finish things within the allocated amount of time. Um, so here's my objective. I'm gonna go drill down, guys, into the first one. So my first, you guys remember that my first um, uh, objective was design build, and um, I assigned a task. Um, of meeting with the customer and meeting with the utilities and design, uh, come up with a design, design sketch. I allocated a certain amount of time for each one of these tasks, Adam. And if you remember, um, guys, right in here, we allocated resources. Here you go. So my project manager, Mr. Uh, Whitecomb, is going to be, Derek, is going to be right in here doing all these activities. Can you guys see that? That's what we just talked about. And they are is the end to start so they are uh, looks like you put them start to start here 
Um, so we finish this one, they're starting at the same time, but typically they are in to start. You finish meeting with the customers, if you're the same person, and then you will meet with the utilities and do a, a design sketch, design and do a design sketch. Any comments, guys, any questions about these uh, tasks? With I could have divided these uh, direct meeting with the owner here into multiple activities too, right? A meeting with the owner, get this commitment, one, two, three from this. The outcome of the schematic design, we came up with an outcome. We have an idea what the customers want. Any comments, guys, any questions about the objective of schematic design, in this case, with the tasks and the activities ass assigned to it? So next, Adam, we went into um, the second objective, which is design built. That's what you did with your friend, Chad. So what we did... Uh, this is where we get into the activities uh, and the tasks. Our first task, we didn't divide in activities. Our first task guys, was to do project introduction, but because we're in education, but you can see it, Michelle, blah, blah, project schedule and load calculation. So I have four days to do project schedule and load calculation. And who's doing this? Uh, let me see what whom do you assign this, and I'm putting you on the spot here. Um, right here. The guy who is doing it is Derek, your friend Derek right here, and here's a lot of resources. Can you see, I can't emphasize, the resources is Derek doing this one within four days. He has to come up with the project schedule and load calculation. Am I making sense? Does it make sense, guys, the objectives? And you can go and look at each and every one of them. Then when he finished, when he, and you can see it, they are end to start, the way they are done. Uh, with deadlines and we finish them. Um, they're tied together. You can see how they're tied together. Um, they could be simultaneously done if you have different teams. So that's how you guarantee a project, guys. That's, you cannot guarantee the project without a schedule. A schedule, a uh, Gantt chart is one way of organizing your life, basically. Now I can tell, your project manager can tell if Derek took more than four days, it's a lot, but say, more than four days to come up with the load calculation, sizing all the equipment and project schedule, we, we need an explanation. And immediately you interfered. Do you guys remember when we went to uh, Egan and Parson and Hunt? They always tell you they keep track of it daily. So they don't wait until the end and, oops, we are two months behind or $2 million in a the hole. They keep track of it weekly, at least weekly, so they can recognize we're off the track. Remember, you're watching the flow and you're watching the fluctuation. You will fluctuate within a certain amount. If you start fluctuating like this, you, your job is to interfere and bring it back to the track. That's where your job, bring it back, control it. What's going on here? Derek, uh, grandma passed away and he is not doing a good job now here. You know, we're behind. You know, you've gotta be a reason why we are off. Does that make sense guys? From the plan that we're doing? So here's all the design, um, Adam, the design drawing that we did, and I'm not going to um, spare you guys for all this stuff that we do. So we finished all the design, all the activities that you guys did the design. Then I'm going to go minimize this one, minimize this task. We're done with this task. We're done with this task. Now we're going to go into construction. Oops. I'm going to go erase these. Uh, make it easier for us to do that. So these are the tasks that we're going to do, and I like this one because it's tied directly to what you guys have done. Now we're going to go to the construction. We designed the project. We skipped that. If you, one thing we skipped here, Derek, and Adam, we skipped the specification. We didn't do specification here, but assume it's good done. Now we went to the construction. In the construction, guys, I have my objective is right here, um, is finish the construction. I divided my objective into the task of rough end. Here's my task one. Task number two is inspection, installation. And if you guys remember, right underneath it, if I can fit them all in one, in one, there you go, probably a little bit here. There you go, all the, no, this not here. Oops. Okay, so I assigned, I'm just going to, uh, so I assigned the tasks and the activities, and I assigned the people who are going to work on it. For example, Power, um, rough end power and lighting first floor. It looks like Derek, you assigned one journal and two apprentices to do this task. And you give them uh, how many days? Three days? You give them three days. Can I, I'm just going to focus on one task because all of them are the same, guys. So I have my task. 
I have my activity is of activity number one has uh, uh, rough end power and lighting first floor. Derek gave him three days. He knows the team. Now, the only thing that you guys didn't know is, is it really, take, does it take three days or two days? It doesn't matter. Would it be hard to go change this one to, to two days? Nothing. The concept is the same. How do you know if it takes two days or three days? When you become a project manager, you manage multiple projects, you have an idea how long will it take people to do it, and you tab into, Karen, you tab into estimation. You guys are doing estimation right now. That's why it's the measure time. So three days, it's going to start at this date and end up at this date here. And I'm assigning three people to do this job. One German to apprentice. Done. Can you guys see the resources? Here's my resources. Here's my time. My time. Resources. The thing that's missing, can you guys see anything that's missing from here? Dollar value. You don't see on this chart the dollar value. You know what you can do? Um, you know, the estimation will allow you, if you want to do that deal, is to put uh, finishing them, and when they're done, I should be done with 20K. Spend $20,000 on this task. Now, if I spend more, that's where estimation guys break down. The estimation becomes a major thing. Now, I have, um, I have three people working on it. It's completely done, and we spend 20 grand. If that's okay, then this particular task is successful. If it's not, then look at the fluctuation. Remember that fluctuation. How far are we fluctuating from our plan? We have a plan. If we're within the range of fluctuation, 5% off, plus or minus is a good fluctuation, we're good. For more than that, guys, like if, if we're 5% of what we budgeted for here, so keep an eye on it. If we're 20%, we have an issue. We need to know what's going on. So I might have to go interfere and have another crew working on this next task before they screw me up. Can you just see how important to keep track on dividing the project into objectives, the objectives into tasks, the tasks into activities, assign to the activity a resource with a dollar value and a time frame. It's not just a resource. If you don't finish it in four days, you screwed me up. You put the schedule in behind. You know, and I'm not saying guys things doesn't come. It, you know, you could be a day behind, but at least you know you're behind. If you don't have a schedule, guys, you don't know if you're behind. The worst thing that could happen to you on a project is you really don't know if you're doing good or bad or ugly. Welcome to a lot of companies <laughs> that they're running away. They're really at the end. Oops, we're two million dollars in the hole. Well, what the heck were you doing over the whole year? What, how, how did? Why didn't you keep track of your expenses? Income and ex this is just income and expense, very simple. You know, divide your task into manageable activities, doable, manageable, measurable activities. Doable, manageable, measurable, measurable, manageable activities. That's what you're looking at. And the other thing that we do, Karen, is we communicate this one to the people who work for you. So I go to the field, Derek, when you become a project manager, to the foreman, and the, the best way if you have your own crew and have control over them. Talk to those three people said, hey, we have assigned you guys four days to this, finish this task. So they know that they have four days. So they know if you give them five days, they will finish the job in four, five days. <laughs> if you give them four days, they will finish the job in four days. So that a good manager, guys, remember, we're not going to enslave people. We're not going to abuse people. I'm, I'm a firm believer of that. You want to give him an ample amount of time for an average, well-educated, trained electrician to do the work. That's what you're giving him. So these four days, three days should be fair. You can't just give him an impossible task. You really can't. So and communicate to them that they have these three days to finish these activities. They step up to the plate, they finish their activities. You as a project manager, check on it, check, done. You might not check on every one of the activities. You might come right at this task, guys, and say this task was allocated, uh, how many days? 13, uh, looks like rough end. I have 13 days. Am I within 13 days? He has to start and end within this time. And I should have spent um, $500,000 on this task. So you might not go down to the activities because it's just too deep, um, too, too much tracking. Uh, you go to, at least to the task. Look at your task. Have we finished rough end power within $5,000 and within the time frame that we have and the amount of days that we did? Yup, check, done. If we did not, um, then we have an issue. 
So, but the best way of tracking it is down to the activity. If you have a, your activity prop, typically the, and you communicate this one to the foreman guys, the foreman will keep track of these activities, a good foreman, because he has to answer to you as a project manager. And um, why would you think the foreman will keep track of these activities? Because at the end of the day, they need to meet the task. You need dollar value and time value. We have met our task. Um, otherwise, the foreman is liable to you. Why didn't we meet the task? You know, any comments, guys, about these tasks and activities and assigning a time frame to them and dollar value? We did not do a dollar value in this one, but we could have assigned a dollar value for these one of if each one of these activities. Where would you get the dollar value, Karen, from your estimation? You can slice your estimation as much as you want to match your schedule. Adam, any comments, any questions, guys? Comments, questions? So then we go, guys, to the next activity, which is rough and inspection. We assign all this stuff. I have two days to finish the whole thing. Keep track of it. Yep, done. How much dollar value is going to cost me? A grand. I have a dollar. So admit this, check, check, done. I'm on track for success. Remember, ultimate goal at the end of the day that the project is successful within budget, on time, happy customers, internal, external. If I go to that journeyman here and curse him and yell at him through the foreman and fire him and make his life miserable, I miss the goal, guys. Happy internal and external customer. I want everybody who worked on the project, a good manager, to walk out of this project, happy, want to work for me again, right? Is that what you guys want? Your goal is everyone work on this project wants to work for you again as a project manager. I'm not saying in a perfect world, you know, that would happen. You will have conflict, but your job is not to abuse people, guys. We're not, we're not gonna so these estimates and these times and dollar value have to be realistic, doable. Remember the doable. They have to be doable. You can't just say cut it by half and en enslave them to do it. <laughs> you know, and they best off at you and they start sabotaging it intentionally and what's not. So, okay, so here's rough end. Then we go, guys, to the second uh, installation. And when I'm walking fast because you guys have done this, I'm just tying it to the whole project management initiative. Then, Adam, we finished our rough end with a new installation. Look what Derek did. He assigned the same thing for rough end installation here. He gave six days, six here on argue, six days, five days, two days. It doesn't matter. Experience will come with that. I duration. We have a duration that's going to give you, uh, I have the duration, here you go. That's it, the duration that's going to go for this project. And I'm assigning the same group of people who did the rough end are going to be doing the installation. And they have to wait. And you can see that end to start all the time, guys, to make sure that things are have been done. You have to install the system before, before you finish it. When, before your device, all these put all your devices in this wall. If you were to put it, you have to put the rough end, rough end the box in the conduits, pull the wires, and then put your device, device in the area. And again, you can divide it in any way, shape, or form that you can do. Then we have to do final inspection. Um, everything is cool, done, uh, approved, resolved the inspection. And the last thing, uh, Adam, is we're going to get our paycheck. So we need to deliver the project. And I'm, this is, guys, a this is probably 10% of a real project. The real project, they have a lot of waiting period for this and that and in between. And, you know, we have to wait until they sheer rock and paint and then come back and put our devices. So there's a lot of stuff. Walk in with the owner. Remember, this guy means dollars for you. The owner means dollar value for you. You piss him off, you're out of job. I tell the apprentices, guys, when I teach them all the time, customers are always right even when they're wrong. They pay your check. They pay your company's check. So as a project manager, the, you, this guy is your buddy, is as good as your grandma. Um, as far as you're concerned, you want this guy, the project owner, the owner or whoever represents the owner, next time, Derek, to like you personally and pinpoint you to your company so you can lead their next building when they build it. That's your job. So if he tried to kind of squeeze you for a few things that doesn't cost much, do it. You're building relationship. You're building relationship with the customers. You become their project manager, guys, when if they leave a company, they take half of the clients with them. Literally half of the clients with them because the project, a good project manager build a great relationship with the customers and with the crews that work with them. There are project managers working in engineering firms. When they left, they took all the designers and the drafters with them. They like them. 
They like to work for this guy. They respect them. They share the profit with them. They share the success with them. So your job Adam, is to be that particular project manager. You're the owner is going to be your, your buddy. Uh, people who work on this project, the uh, foreman, the journeyman, everybody who worked there, they want to pinpoint you. I like to work for this guy on, on a project managed by this guy or gal. So that's that's ultimately, guys, what your schedule is. That's what you did with your friend Chad two times for this project. Um, I don't know unless you guys have um, superpower. Um, this is the only way that I know of that could guarantee you success in the project. With all of this, you could still fail. Your project could still fail. But if you follow it, your chances of succeeding in a project is much higher than if you don't. Uh, you, know, you could sit there and, and if you guys are doing rough, if you're a small electrical contractor, it doesn't matter. If you're building a stadium, your schedule here has to fit in an overall construction schedule for the stadium. So they take your schedule, fit it into the concrete guys and mechanical guys and architecture and everything else you have to fit remember i always remind people um, adam and derek that we here is the construction pie look how nice of a pie i have and we the electrical construction are this little piece of that pie so when you talk to people make sure you do not exceed your size and design and build we are 10 percent so when you build the stadium right here What's the percentage, typical percentage for us, electrically speaking? 10%. You see, guys, how we, we, we're almost nothing. <laughs> so 90% of the project, 90% of the project, design and construction, belongs to somebody else. Can you see the gravity? Karen, do you see the gravity, how you can fit your design within that 90%? Do you guys see that? We see ourselves as big boys and girls, right? But remember, you're going to fit in the big picture. The big picture is 90% of the people who work on this project are not you, not your company. You have to play good with the with the with these boys and girls. Um, play fair, otherwise they'll screw you up. So you that's how you fit in the whole construction design build construction. So it might fluctuate depending on the project, guys, 10 to 20, but typically 10%. That's what you are. The others 90 are mechanical, concrete, lock, whatever. The architectural, the civil, structural, um, all those guys, engineering and design, design and construction. They come in and they to build that hospital, right? You walked into projects, Derek. You see, uh, that's where we fit. So all this beautiful schedule that you did, start to start or start to end or end to start, whatever you, you, you did your, your task, and you assign the resources for it, have to fit within 10%. Schedule wise, guys, our electrical schedule had to fit in the overall construction schedule, or we're doomed. You know, you have to fit your schedule within. That's why you coordinate all this um, your schedule with the overall construction schedule. Any comments, any questions, gentlemen, ladies? Any comments, any questions? Comments, questions, resources? The last thing I'm going to say, guys, is how is this tied to the estimating? You can see how the when we did the estimation, guys, we got all the resources here, especially the construction. We were working about the construction and the time, the time frame that we're doing it, and the dollar value, and the dollar value. All these dollar values, you pull them out of your estimate, Adam, and you put them in your schedule. So your estimation should lead directly to your schedule. So. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions? That's it. So that's what I want to do, guys, in this chapter. I can I cannot emphasize. I know some of you guys, you're still designers and going there, but be aware that this is what how, what, what it goes on the project. Your job right now, Adam, is to fit in the schedule. Um, you're not making the schedule for the company. You are to fit in the schedule. And in five years, when you come here, guys, and teach Chad a few skills here, because you become a big boy and girl and managing your own projects. And I guarantee you guys, there are young men and women sat in these seats right now, and they are a different uh, electrical contractor and engineering leading their own projects. So it's not hard to be. Part of being organized, remember how we talked about the traits of an estimator project manager, organized, systematic thinking, and all this good way. 
Okay, comments, questions. Any comments, guys, any questions? So I walked you through all this. I hope that wasn't too overwhelming. And you guys uh, you guys have done all this stuff, Adam, and start to end and goals and what's not. So, so that's all what I have for you guys. Comments, questions, comments. So next, um, I think tomorrow what I'm going to do, guys, is they have, when you put the schedules, Karen and... Uh, and um, a flow chart, then you start doing network analysis. Now, network analysis is a little bit higher than where we are. So I'm going to mention it, guys. This is more for, uh, you know, Apple or, um, you know, Microsoft. When they come up with a project, they start doing network analysis on the best way of approach for it, the GE and those big boys. For the construction, I don't know, not a whole lot. When you, the network analysis, you have multiple paths that lead to the same, and you pick the, the, the least product, the least um, expensive um, way of reaching the goal. So remember, project management guys, we're construction. It's not for every, I mean, we, project management for every single aspect of life uh, or construction and manufacturing, what's not. Okay, that's all we have for you guys. So I'm going to continue with my friend Karen today doing review for the project. So please um, get yourself the uh, Adam your next week. We'll do a review for your, all your, uh, your project estimation, so we're good to go. Thank you.